Hello, Simon. Hi, Damien. How are you? Oh, you can hear me. That's perfect. I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm perfect here in cold, dark southwest London, the home of tennis, Wimbledon. I hope we're going to bring a lot of energy into your life. Um, Simon, uh, I have to tell you one thing. I'm very happy to see you in person because uh, the other day I was watching uh, a few interviews with you and I came across uh, a quick fire interview when you were asked a question, and I was absolutely gobsmacked, to be quite frank, because you were asked a question, what do you look for in a great entrepreneur? And your answer was so simple, yet so brilliant. And to be quite frank, uh, this is what I would have said if someone had asked me a question, what do you look for in a great event professional? Do you remember what you answered? I'm going to guess I said something about passion or personality. Uh, Close, but not. You said, I look for the ability to see a problem and solve it in spite of everybody telling you it didn't need solving. And I was like, my goodness, so simple, yet so clever and so true. Um, I guess this ability made you quickly pivot to virtual when the COVID happened. Well, everyone had the same problem, didn't they? So we all had to... Uh, make do and mend and be inventive at the start of the pandemic and charity film awards one of my one of my projects was scheduled to happen in april so yes we were we were confronted with a problem we didn't know how to solve and we um had to work out how to do so all right everyone says well it's almost the same thing but as we know same same but different uh why virtual events are making event professionals think again about what events mean and how to make them effective. The stage is yours right now, Simon. Thank you, Damien. Hello, everyone, wherever you are in the world, welcome. Thank you for joining me uh, here on the management stage. I, I hope over the next 15 to 20 minutes to, to really just give you, give you a spark, to give you a brainstorm, to give you, I always set myself an objective with an audience. I want to give you one good idea, one new way of thinking that will change the way you address the current challenges we face. So I'll start out by telling you briefly about myself and why, why I might be qualified to help you do that. I'm a serial entrepreneur in events. I've launched awards and trade shows, um, but most recently I've been involved in the founding of the Virtual Events Institute. And that's meant I've confronted and met all sorts of people who are addressing the problems that we as event professionals are facing on a daily basis. Now, for any of us who've lucky to been lucky enough to visit Southeast Asia and attempted to buy a T-shirt when the size isn't quite right, we'll have encountered this phrase where the shopkeeper says to us, ah, it's same, same, but different. And I think that is what we are dealing with as event professionals. It's the same problem. We're trying to achieve the same objectives, but it's just a tiny bit different. And it's in that difference that our skill and our passion and our problem solving abilities will manifest themselves. We're not tearing up the rule book, but we are going to slightly rewrite it. So I want to start with a, a story of something I saw on Twitter uh, recently. Uh, a mum, this lady, Rihanna, was talking about explaining the concept of a video store to her daughters. And her daughter said, so if you're, someone in your town was watching Harry Potter, then you couldn't watch it. And these two girls then proceeded to laugh for 20 minutes about what for them felt the absurdity of that bricks and mortar experience. One video store, maybe five copies of Harry Potter. It makes no sense to digital natives. And many of us have been through that change in a very short period of time my 30 years of experience and your equivalent experience in the event industry has been reduced to 30 weeks. People in our industry were often fond of the phrase evolution, not revolution. Let me tell you right now, we are in the middle of revolution. And that change, that sense of the world being turned upside down will not stop. But the controls we have, the levers we pull, the dials we dial, they are the same. Your skill set, your knowledge, your expertise, your network is just as valuable. You're just going to have to tweak the volume, 
change the treble, adapt the graphic equalizer in order to make it fit what's necessary in this new world. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about where I think those levers and dials are and help you, I think, reflect and consider differently how you approach the same problems we've always had. Now, there's a great story in this slide here about a traditional physical business which was completely eaten by a digital business. And I think for those of us who are reflecting our current situation, consideration of what Blockbuster didn't do and what Netflix did is a really important starting point for our lesson. And I want to take it a step further. This is the last Blockbuster video store in the world. It's in a town called Bend in Oregon. And it still exists, only it doesn't hire out videos anymore. It's an Airbnb. Events aren't going anywhere. Physical, real life, in real life events are going to come back because people want experience. And we have an opportunity, a unique opportunity to combine the digital with that experience in a moment of a moment of revolution so that our future events, whether they're digital, physical or hybrid, can benefit from that opportunity. The first difference I'd like to talk about is your audience. I think one of the bad habits we all fall into as event professionals is being in our seat, in our office, around our boardroom, discussing what the event used to look like last time and what it will look like this time. The first big adjustment I urge you all to make is consider everything from your audience's perspective. Your sponsors, your exhibitors, your delegates, your partners can make every decision about your virtual event from their perspective. Sit in their seat, stand in their shoes. Because your audience has an infinity of choices at their fingertips and you are playing with their time, their money, their enjoyment, their values, their comfort, their interests, and their distractions in a way that you didn't need to take account in a physical event. You didn't need to worry if the tech failed for a second in a physical event because people were patient. They'd come to your event, they were attending, they were, they were staying still. But in the, in the digital environment, new, something better is only a click away. So there's a very, very high benchmark of quality to cross. Make sure your audience is seen and heard. Think about the ways you're going to engage them. I love the chat room we've got here. I love seeing where everyone's come from. I love hearing the questions. And what struck me about virtual events is when the good ones are allowing audiences' voices to be heard, those, those very interactivities are happening as the people are speaking in an actual way that didn't happen traditionally in events. So important considerations for you. Don't overestimate your value to the key clients. This is a moment of revolution. Everyone is changing their perspective. So understand in depth what your customers are doing. What's their pain points? How are they adapting? Are they running their own virtual events? Think already about how you can combine the online and in person. Are there packs you can send to people? Can you send them manuals by post? Can you send presents, treats, games, magic effects? Anything you can do to make the event on screen feel grounded in the real world will help you. And I urge you all to think long-term, not short-term. We're all feeling pain and excitement and anxiety and, 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 and urgency at the moment, but these opportunities are long-term do not underestimate the opportunities we're being presented with. I was asked recently if I uh, had a million pounds to invest in virtual events where I'd invest it. And I said, I wouldn't invest it in a platform. I would invest it in event professionals, creating new formats and creating new events, because that's where the excitement of this opportunity is for me. It's the opportunity for us all to reimagine the value and the engagement we offer our clients. Couple of things I'd urge you not to do. Don't say we're doing physical online. I'm going to come back to that point because it, it's really important for me. But also don't reinvent the wheel. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we do really well already. Great processes, great people, great knowledge. The wheel works, keep the wheel. 
and this is my central idea for everybody who's adapting and stood me in great stead for charity film awards focus hard on the emotion and the ideas you want your audiences to exchange and feel not on the format your endeavor when you go online with an event is to translate the emotion the feelings the excitement the spontaneity not to replicate in a blow by blow way in a playbook style way your old format it won't work it's too long it's too cumbersome it's too multi-stranded think about what the essence is and one of the ways to think about that essence is about your signature moments what are they are they the opening ceremony are they your announcements are they your prizes are they your drinks party what are the most important signature moments in your existing events and how do you recreate them as importantly how do you make new ones new signature moments new things that make your new event the first edition of something that will last for 20 or 30 years how do you extend your event horizon how do you make your community last for 365 days a year and how do you take into account that even as we speak now there are people around the world some are having breakfast some are having a glass of wine some are having lunch everybody's experience of a digital event is different because the place they experience that digital event in is different how do you take account for that one area that i think we do need to really address and improve as an industry is the way in which we support our speakers sponsors and delegates in physical events there's so much we can deal with on the spot we can talk to people we can manage a situation we can dress a challenge much much harder when everybody's remote i think we'll see a huge huge uplift in the quality of those elements and the way in which we rehearse and explain to people what's going on and structure expectations of what the digital event holds for them I'd like amidst all the talk about platforms to really urge you all to think about your social media profiles and polish them and particularly with your C-suite colleagues, get them to understand LinkedIn. I'm seeing so many senior people move to LinkedIn during this, uh, this crisis and this lockdown and really not be very good at it. And social media is such a boon. It's such a great resource to supplement your events, your virtual events and your communities that I urge you all to think very hard about what your strategy is for it. A question I'm going to be asked later, I'm sure, so I'll answer it now, is that live or not live, live or pre-record? And what I'd say is, I think that's up to you and your risk set and the way you feel, but I think you need to be consistent. I think, and that means consistent of story, not consistent of live or pre-record, just consistent of delivery. I think you need to think about the importance of rehearsals and tech check, and what you do if it doesn't work and what i would say specifically about pre-records is even if it's not live make it feel like it is make it authentic that's one of our virtues don't lose our virtue at this moment of challenge make sure that even pre-recorded sessions feel like they're live a, a, a brief word about the virtual events institute of which i'm a founder we're a resource for learning and training and amazing free content and networking and uh, and white papers and i do urge you to to visit the website and check it out it's a wonderful resource and i i know that some of you um who are watching already have gone through the training program and I, I'm, I'm delighted that you've been part of our journey with us and finally I want to end with a huge note of positivity for all of you. All of you who are gathered here to learn. Event professionals are amazing in their desire to learn and connect and to share. And one thing we've always been good at since we first created markets and moved on to trade shows and then sophisticated conferences is that together we create amazing content. We create amazing communities and we create amazing business opportunities for our clients and partners. Thank you for having me. This is the most important thing because uh, you shared your knowledge and even though you covered the topic um, in a way, I'm going to ask you a very important question. What is the biggest opportunity in virtual events? I think the biggest opportunity is to uh, reimagine the format. There, there's a way of delivering uh, an event 
that is a new format in a new market delivering a new piece of value. And, and I don't think we know what that is yet. I think we're starting to see some people explore it, but I don't think we know what that really is. So it's not a trade show. It's not a conference. It's it's not a webinar. There's just there's, there's something. And, and, and I think the technology partners will be help will be part of that journey. But, but they're not the solution. The solution will come from an event professional. Actually, it will come from an entrepreneur who really understands a market need and solves that market's problem. Very well, very well said. We have a first question from our chat. Uh, Mikhail, I'm looking at the VR Bella as a VR platform for the event. Are there any worthy competitors for it? Well, I'm no, I'm no tech expert, um, but um, I, I, I think that... Um, VR is a presents uh, one slight challenge for uh, every organizer in the, the computing power required by your delegates at the other end is significant. I'm, I'm a big fan in those instances of making it as simple as possible to make it. Can it be on a tablet? Can it be on a phone? Can it be on my TV? Um, but if you've got a VR project, I'd love to see it. I think I'm a big gamer. So VR ultimately will be a huge part of the mix going forward. Great. Uh, next question from Christopher. Christoph, I completely agree with you, Simon. Don't you think that one of the ideas will be thinking about live events as TV shows only with interaction? Exactly. I think we need to think about what we're delivering as having TV-like TV -like quality. Anybody now watching this, um, obviously, Dami and they're staying for you, your TV-like quality. But if they're bored with me, they can switch onto YouTube or they can go onto Netflix and watch Game of Thrones. Christos is exactly right. We've got to deliver TV-like quality. I, I do think one of the places we should go for inspiration are actually things like the Eurovision Song Contest or the World Cup or the Olympics or, or any reality show they all have elements that we understand as event professionals, but they have the production quality that we will need to aspire to. We have to definitely, we have to adapt to the new normal that we are right now facing. Okay, we've talked a bit about uh, the biggest opportunity. Let's talk about the greatest challenge for event organizers moving to virtual. I think the biggest challenge is the huge number of platforms available and the difficulty of understanding which one is right for you and your needs and your clients' needs. I think there's a huge challenge that client companies, exhibitors and sponsors are realizing that there are some of these things they can do very efficiently themselves now. So if we're not offering huge value to them, we lose that as a, as a commercial opportunity. And I think particularly for those people who are trying to adapt trade show models, I think there's a real challenge to show exhibitors how the new online model can work for them because for, for too long, exhibitors have relied on serendipity and volume. And, and I think I've, I've talked previously about the idea that how do we keep that serendipity? How do we keep spontaneity? I think that's tied into it. But I think those are the three big challenges. Uh there have been quite a few changes, but do you think we need to change our, for example, our job titles, roles and responsibilities, uh, responsibilities in uh, the world of virtual events? Trivial, but yet interesting. I, 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 it's, a very, it's a really interesting question. I, I think I'm innately conservative about job titles, and, um, and yet I understand why I might want to do that. What I would be loath to lose is our sense of event professional, but I have long been an advocate that we shouldn't call ourselves organizers. We, what we do is way, way more sophisticated than organizing. I, I, I've often argued we should call ourselves event producers, and perhaps that's a kind of interim title, which, which builds on TV and film and the screen and gives us an enhanced status. I don't know if you know that there was uh, an ancient writer who was Terence who wrote, uh, Fortes Fortuna Adjuvat, which basically means uh, fortune favors the bold. Uh, how bold can we get not to cross the line in the virtual world? I don't think there is any step we can't take. I think we've got questions about VR. We're starting to see people using holograms effectively. Uh, I, I think we will see every type of solution from the most simple 
to the most Star Trek type solution emerge. And what I want us to do as event producers and event entrepreneurs is think about how we adapt those opportunities to serve our markets, to serve our customers, to help those people make the human connection, that human meeting, that face to face contact, that power of emotion that we as event people know is the true power of what we do. We need to work out how to not lose that online. And then once again, we will rule the world. I, I think what the, the, the sentence itself is is uh, mistranslated because uh, it's translated into the, the fa fortune favors the bold, but it's actually favor for, for uh, fortunes the strong. So, and we are basically strong with our knowledge and our ability to change and to adapt. Don't you think so? I, I think that's that's a, a really nice point. We have enormous power and influence. We are adept at helping two other people come together to forge a relationship i mean it's like it's the root of the root of human communication is two people coming together and joining to become one and gathering around a campfire to tell stories that's what we do right now we're doing it through a screen and a microphone and and i'm doing it in my in my study not on not on the stage at a major exhibition center but our ability to forge human connections and tell stories is incredible power it's actually beyond power it's magic and we have the ability to combine that magic and deliver that magic in the digital world i have a question connected right now deborah wrote when you have larger meetings uh, there are usually breaks which can be used for, to socialize lunch coffee break etc how would you replace that digitally there are a couple of platforms that have got that that technology in it and i think it's a really really great point i attended an event uh, i spoke at an event uh, recently that solved part partly solved that problem by telling people it was a very english event so everyone went and got a cup of tea and some biscuits and then carried on the chat and it it felt so human because we all went to the kitchen and we all made a cup of tea and we all brought some biscuits back i think that's part of what i mean when i talk about structuring people's expectations and telling them how to behave there's a there's a so so let's allow people to do those things but do them in a fun way let's share a recipe let's say it should be green tea today let's do a virtual wine tasting if it's an evening event or let's just say we trust everybody to go away for as long as they want and come back uh, to be quite frank yesterday i hosted a conference which ended up with wine tasting uh the participants received uh, bottles of wine and it was a perfect solution for uh, great entertainment. They had a wine specialist who described every single uh, wine, every single bottle, and they had a shared, basically, activity. It was something absolutely amazing. I do, I do believe that this is also the future of our virtual uh, events. Do you know what, Damien? I've, I've just had an idea, and it kind of builds on that, and it solves uh, Deborah's problem. Let's imagine a, a multinational event like this every delegate was paired up with another delegate from a different country and everybody had to send a chocolate candy bar confectionery from their country to the delegate they were matched up with so we're already matchmaking but we're doing it around the tea break or the coffee break so i might send you a um uh, uh, a digestive biscuit and you could send me one of those awesome polish raspberry jaffa cakes that i buy at the polski schlep down the, the down the road and we would then talk about our favorite confectionery and we would build rapport using an event format of course we would hold and pray for our delivery guys to bring to deliver the packages uh, on time but that's a great idea i told you ladies and gentlemen brief but yet brilliant ideas. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. It has been thank a pleasure. Uh, do stay with us because we have an amazing treat for all the people who specialize in organizing uh, events. And we're just getting started. Once again, thank you for being here with us. Any last words? Thank you all for having me. Um, and um, please, let's all, let's all share our best practice on this amazing journey together. Once again, Thank you very much. Have an amazing evening and have an, I hope it's going to be a bit warmer later.
Well, I, I've, I, I'm on the um, panel debate in a couple of hours' time, so I will be having my glass of wine with that. Good for you. I need to wait two more hours to open my bottle of wine, but it is also happening. Once again, thank you very much. You gave us a lot of positive energy. I hope we gave it back to you. You did. Thanks, Damien. Thank you.